we live? We're live. I don't Excellent. see anything. I think, uh, well, if you are watching this, welcome. <laughs> we had a little bit of technical difficulties here as we got started, but we want to make sure everything was right. We had to enable our chat. We think we got everything up and running. We're good to go. Um, if by some chance, you know, things don't play clearly, this is our first time doing this, my first time doing this. Um, if, you know, things are delayed or anything like that, all these videos and, and photos will be up on photopxl.com over the next couple of weeks. So I'll be sure to send out links, but here we are. We're, we're live. We are? I'm not yeah. seeing it live on my computer. It'll, it'll come up, I think, at you some think? point. <laughs> uh, you don't want to watch yourself giving a speech. I just refreshed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll try refreshing here. Oh, it looks like it's supposed to. <laughs> it says waiting for photo PXL. That's all right. Oh, so we, we know we're going, right? Should... Yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're not actually properly maintaining great social distance here. But... No, but <laughs> this was uh, scheduled as an actual live event, and uh, we canceled the event. It's just myself and Kevin here, and then Derek Tao is uh, running um, all of our, our streaming capabilities, so he's uh, back behind the camera over here. So thank you, uh, and we will we not will. cough. None of us are symptomatic. So we, should oh, be. Yeah, we don't know where the carrier is, but yes. we're hoping we're okay. We should, we're risking it all for you guys. Yep, so. that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what they say. I'm just trying to turn my little screen on so I can watch. Oh, there we are. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, that's not us. That's Drew. <laughs> oh, my. Where's the live part? That's funny. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't see it, Michael. That's all right. We you must you be sure going it's okay? Out. Yeah, yeah. You're, we're we're good. good. All right. Well, well, first off, let me make sure we introduce each other. I'm Kevin Raber. I'm the CEO and publisher of uh, Photo PXL and uh, owner of the Rock Hopper Workshops, which is part of what we're doing here tonight. And this is Michael Durr, uh, one of our video producers. Yeah. And uh, back at home is Deborah, uh, my wife, and up in Canada is Chris Sanderson. And uh, about four weeks ago, before all the madness in the world started. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We yeah. had an opportunity to run a workshop in Antarctica with 31 uh, other photographers and instructors. Um, along on this workshop was Michael, myself, and uh, everybody knows Art Wolf. And it's uh, almost an annual event for me. I've been going to Antarctica since 2005. Uh, I've made over 20 trips there. was fortunate enough to uh, meet a lovely woman and convinced her to go down to Antarctica where <laughs> I could marry her. Um, but Antarctica is a very special place. And... Uh, Michael's had his first opportunity to go there as a newbie, yes. and it's always <laughs> fun to see what somebody discovers and feels their first time there. Now, I've been going all these times, and every time there's an opportunity that makes a change for me. Um, so it really is a very unique and interesting place, a very dynamic landscape, um, unbelievable wildlife. Anyway, tonight we want to share with you uh, our adventure. and. Um, I'm not going to go much in more into detail because I'm going to turn it over to my friend Michael and yep. uh, he'll take us for a guided tour. I haven't seen any of these videos. <laughs> I'm wondering whether I should get a box of Kleenex or something. Yeah, but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in any case, Michael, this show's all yours at this point. All right. I uh, can't wait to see what you've uh, managed to show us your vision of Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we hope you all enjoy the next few videos. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me and giving me the opportunity to go on this trip. Um, obviously, like just having my, my name up there with you, yours and Art Wolf's <laughs> is uh, a little bit of a, I don't know, it's a strange feeling for me to see that, but it was uh, an incredible trip. Um, it does, I mean, this, this trip actually inspired me to create this whole presentation because I was very excited to share it with basically everyone I know. Uh, if, if any of you have been following my Instagram over the past uh, couple of weeks, it's, uh, I'm calling it the ice luge. Um, so I, right now it's just all blue and, and ice. And I, I, that was my favorite, favorite part of Antarctica was just the ice formations and seeing that all in person, just an incredible opportunity. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have a presentation and keynote that I will that I'll bring up and go through and talk, talk about some images, show some videos. Uh, again, hopefully everything plays smoothly and you won't have any have any issues. It will be playing at a lower resolution, so for all of you tech guys out there, it is uh, a 1080, <laughs> 1920 by 1080 HD feed, but uh, it's going to be playing back, I believe, at 1280. So if if it looks a little bit, uh, you know, less quality, that's why, uh, just for playback speed and stuff like that. So we can uh, let's head out over to the presentation here, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Uh, we're going to begin with a little bit of the traveling. So a lot of people have asked me, you know, how long does it take to get there? How do you get there? Uh, well, this is my itinerary, essentially. So I went from Indianapolis to Miami. You know, it was like a three-hour flight. I had an eight-hour layover, which was uh, an interesting time, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> uh, I was also, so I flew from Miami to Santiago, which is the long leg of the trip, about 10 hours. Um, and... Uh, from Santiago to Punta Arenas, which is the very southern tip of South America. And then Punta Arenas to Antarctica, which is still is about a two and a half hour flight. Uh, so all in, it's about an 18 hours in the air uh, just to get there. So we were actually in Antarctica for about five days. Um, and it took almost as much of that time just to get back and forth from there. <laughs> yeah, there's no easy way to do that. Yes. Uh, so we're going to start off, I, I'm going to take you kind of through our whole trip. So in Puto Arenas, we got there a little bit early, uh, Kevin and I, we wanted to make sure that we were there before the attendees kind of got a lay of the land. I was able to like kind of get my bearings and, and whatnot. And uh, we did a short video um, while we were there at the cemetery that they have uh, in Punta Arenas, which is this beautiful cemetery. Uh, one of the most beautiful in the world, I believe. Yeah, I think it's in the top five uh, rated by National Geographic. Okay, awesome. And uh, so we have a video uh, for that, which I'll, I'll bring up here shortly. But I want to share this image here first, which is the very <laughs> first image that I took on the oh, trip. Breakfast. <laughs> breakfast this was breakfast in Punta Arenas from the hotel uh, breakfast bar, like in the lobby. Um, and I took this out the window, this double rainbow, and kind of set the precedent, I think, for the whole trip. <laughs> so I wanted to be sure uh, to share that. It was an iPhone photo um, right, right from the breakfast that we were having. Uh, this is, again, uh, some of you may be familiar with the 360 cameras uh, that have come out recently. This is the Insta360 that I had with me. You can kind of do these fun pictures kind of lended itself to uh, doing one of these, they call them uh, like mini planets, I think, or, or something like tiny planets. Uh, so it's kind of a fun shot just down by the water in Punta Arenas. So this is the video, it's just a few minutes long and uh, we, we'll just let it speak for itself here. in the middle of this beautiful cemetery in Punta Arenas. It's a place I've been many times before. Probably one of the very prettiest cemeteries I've been in, and there's been a couple like in Buenos Aires and so forth. But it yields itself greatly to photographic uh, potential. And at the same time, it slows you down when you see the way the, uh, the people of Chile here have uh, buried their dead and honor their dead. It's kind of um, beautiful and chilling and scary at the same time. It's been a great day to be out here. We have these gigantic, gorgeous clouds. I've been doing a, some HDR, some images I think I'm going to bring over into black and white just because of the drama. I'm doing HDR mainly because of, of the sky, and I really want to take the sky down dark. I can use that in Capture One using the uh, Lumina, um, and then I can blend in the normal exposure and see what I have, or I can just try traditional HDR. Sometimes when I'm shooting out here, You just gotta sit still for a minute and the shot comes to you, you know? It's um, been a good morning so far walking around. Still have a bunch more that I wanna shoot. Kind of nice to get out and get that done before we get on a ship and head to Antarctica.
Wow. All right. So that was the, <laughs> oh, you might have a delay there. That was the video from Punta Arenas there, um, from the cemetery. It's really, really beautiful place. Uh, we spent, oh, it was uh, probably like at least a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours there. Yeah, a couple just... hours there. I could have probably stayed even longer. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting place because it's kind of like, um, you know, a very class segmented kind of cemetery where yeah. you, you've got all the big mausoleums at one end and then, you know, all the people that are put in drawers at the other right, end, right. Whatever, you know, like, <laughs> kind of a, uh, boxes and so forth. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see the way they decorate their graves and how they honor them, how some have been maintained, mm -hmm. how some haven't. Each one kind of tells its own story. Um, I'll be doing an article on this with my photographs um, on the Photo PXL site in the yep. next week or so. We're, we're working on so many projects right now. <laughs> yeah, we have so, we'll so much content. From but that's, trip. that was a, a really kind of a well, easily put together um, uh, presentation, not, not long and so forth, and kind yeah. of sets the stage, I think, very well. By the way, um, we do have comments, so if you want to kind of leave comments, you can. We'll yep. try to look at them while the, the, we're off kind of camera. Um, I know we have a guy named Jeff out there, so our lighting sucks, but uh, <laughs> you know, we're actually in the middle of a thunderstorm. We hope we can stay yeah, on, I know. online, <laughs> um, but uh, I hear everything else is going fine. So Michael, where do we go next? All right, so just uh, another quick thing here um, from Puto Arenas. Uh, this shot here is uh, it's from the hill. There's a kind of a large hill in, in Puto Arenas that looks out over the whole city. So I kind of did that tilt shift effect on here, which kind of makes it, it was so colorful and vibrant, kind of gives it that, you know, to toy vibe to it, which is kind of a cool viewpoint. I just walked up here by myself. Um, I think it was after one of our meals or something and, and just went to check it out. It was a cool view, it was kind of raining. So, you know, it was, it was a, a, fun, a fun thing to, to get up there and do. This is a similar, similar view. This is actually from my hotel window. And uh, if you look down kind of towards the bottom right there, uh, you, might, you might see that statue. So that's where this perspective is from. Uh, this is just a quick, quick time lapse that I did with the GoPro. I was kind of just hanging out there for a while and the clouds were moving so fast, I kind of th thought it would be a good opportunity to do one. Um, but this was a kind of a cool, cool area. It's like the circle in the downtown. Our hotel was just off, off of the street here. Uh, so I can't, kind of ventured out there and just hung out for a little while and ran the time lapse. Uh, this is a cathedral. It's actually the cathedral that you saw in that in that previous sh shot. Um, just walked in there, take some pictures and, and check it out. This guy was kind of sweeping up. I thought it was kind of a cool cool perspective. Um, it's called Sacred Heart Cathedral. This was one of my. I shot this from the hip. <laughs> so I just had my camera and I, I just saw these two guys. You know, there's joking and laughing and having a coffee and then the actually the owner of the building or owner of the coffee shop went outside and he was like cleaning the window so I shot this kind of blindly just to see what I could capture capture the moment and it kind of <laughs> kind of came out pretty well actually I kind of like like how the image worked out yeah you're kind of on street photography that's kind yeah of cool with yeah the I'm not a street the, photographer the washing so. of the window the newspaper yeah we exactly a lot of cool stuff yeah. going on there <laughs> And that's a that shot down there is just the shot of the it's called history coffee i thought it was a, it's a cool place to pop into a damn good cup of coffee too i'm certainly not a you know 317 street shooter <laughs> like some of these guys uh, that it might, might be watching but you know i, I dabble i guess i dabble <laughs> so that brings us to antarctica so we're going to start going through here with a little bit of an in introduction before we play the, the longer video, which is kind of the premiere. And actually, Kevin hasn't even seen this video. I know. I know. So. He always does this to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to bring up this. Uh, I want to kind of lead into the video here with a little bit of explanation and, and things. Uh, we can cut back to the presentation here, and I'll kind of give you a, a little bit of a cue on where we traveled from and where we traveled to. So if you actually see here, we traveled from Puta Arenas to Antarctica to, we landed in a place called uh, Frey Station. And uh, that again was like a two hour, two and a half hour flight. Actually a quite nice flight. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Way nicer than I was yeah, anticipating. Better, better refreshments than we have on regular domestic exactly, flights. Exactly, yeah, here. yeah. And then, um, the boat, that kind of gives you a, sh uh, a little bit of an idea of where we traveled. Again, this is kind of like a broader view of everything. And then traveling back from that same station that we landed, back to Punta Arenas. Now, I should so. note, uh, tell you, this flight, this two and a half hour flight, saved you <laughs> two and a half hours 
yes. on sea <laughs> each way. That's five days of on the roughest seas in the world. That's true. <laughs> the Drake Passage is uh, the one spot in the world where there is no not, no landmass anywhere in that, that those yes. latitudes to uh, stop weather and so forth. And um, I've done the Drake a few times, and um, it can be very exciting when yeah, the ship is die. actually going through the waves and you're looking up to see the top of the waves on a big ship. So um, we count our blessings that we were able to fly and uh, enjoy having refreshments and cups of coffee. But yes. uh, when we landed, it was a little different. That's very true. And we're going to show that here next. So this again, this is a little bit closer view of the Antarctic Peninsula, which is where we kind of toured. But again, we were only up in this like top portion, like just thinking about how big and how vast uh, Antarctica is is really quite mind-boggling, uh, at least to me. Um, when we landed, it, you know, flight, air travel is kind of a, a unique situation in itself. Like, you just kind of feel like you warp different places. And it, it was hard almost to think about, like, where we were on the planet. Um, I know that, for me, that was kind of just a, a fun thing to kind of, like, sit there once in a while and just think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this was, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what did you fly on to get there? And, and this was a shot of the, of the plane. I didn't take this photo, but um, this, this photo was, uh, was, was given to us by Antarctica 21. And um, again, it's, it's a little, it's designed a little bit differently. It looks a little bit different than planes you might be used to seeing. And that is because it's designed for landing on short runways. <laughs> short, gravelly, rocky. Yes, the, <laughs> the runway was <clears throat> very short and gravel. And it was also uh, one of those moments. I kind of wish I had recorded this particular moment, but I was probably gripping the, the, the arm, arm rest. <laughs> but uh, you don't, you just looks like you're going to land in water. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, you, the land just jets out from the water and it's just like a flat plateau. And uh, you land right on the gravel, which was uh, was quite the experience. <laughs> yeah, because when they throw those weird thrusters on, I mean, yeah, you know, the like... plane. <laughs> that's where it felt a little bit a little bit different. Not not your average commercial airline landing, I would say. So. Yeah, a year ago, two years ago, we we landed there, and um, off to the side was a crashed Brazilian C one thirty, which God. was kind of a good welcoming. <laughs> like, As you're coming cool. in, <laughs> one of them that didn't make it, and apparently it was bad weather, and they were said. You know, don't land, and the general on the aircraft said, "All right, we'll land." Unreal. Um, luckily, Unreal. everybody walked away from it, from what I hear. Well, that's good. <laughs> it's Antarctica. That's what that's you find true. a lot there. <laughs> All right, we'll go on here. So this is a little bit. Uh, of information again I'm not, I'm not going to read all this right now or anything like that these will be provided on the article in the article uh, if if you're interested in reading about it but this is the station that we land in uh, landed on and you can kind of see in this map here just the the vast <laughs> size of Antarctica and and how it, really how incredibly large it, it is um, just a couple pictures down there these pictures are mine that I, I I've added in here um, that's just kind of a shot of one of the expedition staff uh, leading us in the Zodiac and then uh, of us uh, on the shoreline there at the freight station. I thought this was kind of a, a f funny sign because basically all the arrows are pointing in one yep. direction. <laughs> um, you're basically a, as about far south as you can get. Uh, it is a Russian station, correct? Russian shared by, <laughs> I guess, it's from Argentinians there and over the hills, a Chinese station. Yeah, they're kind of different stations uh, all throughout, so. This was the first view of the ship uh, from the shoreline. Uh, there's a, a, quite the walk to get to from the plane to the, the beach where you need to get on the Zodiac and then transfer over to the boat. Um, for me, it was a little bit, I, I enjoyed the walk. You know, I, I people, you can walk. Well, people said <laughs> that it was very, it was extremely windy, yeah, it was. which it was, and it was cold. But I just told him, like, I'm from Chicago. It was like walking to work. Uh, just like, uh, you're such a, such a man, Michael. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> well, well, Chicago, man. I, I was like, yeah, this is just a Chicago, you know, walk to work. And that's really what it felt like. I, I think the temperature in general hovered around freezing. Yeah, it was almost actually no time. different than an Indianapolis winter. Yeah, it felt just like a regular, regu like regular standard winter day. But it was really windy. Very windy, yes, and, which uh, made it felt much cooler. Made the ride to the ship a lot of fun. Yeah. Once you, we'll kind of get into this, but once you get into like the, the bays and the area where you're actually cruising in the big boat, you know, you're cut off from the wind. 
but you got to get to that boat first. <laughs> you, you and, and boats. It, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we, I'll talk about it this time. So. Oh, you're going to come clean? We'll cut back here. So the uh, Magellan Explorer is the boat that we were on for this trip. Uh, you know, many people have asked, like, how many people are on it and things like that. Uh, it was about 65 passengers total. And um, I think it's 100 person max. Uh, you know, and that's, you know, there's a fair amount of crew. I don't know where the crew, like, lives. Oh, they have a whole, they have a, they have a whole subculture. They're just like, yeah, just the like basement. these people, like, come and go, and it was it was quite quite interesting. I, I have never personally been on a large cruise ship, so for me, this is, like, the largest ship that I've ever been on. And that's not large at all. No, yeah, it felt like, I mean, it wasn't very large, so I, I, I really enjoyed it. It was, it's an incredible ship, um, as you'll see throughout here, and... It's basically brand new. It, it uh, just completed its its uh, inaugural trip just in, yeah, well, in 2019. We were the uh, 15th voyage on it. That's awesome, yeah. So it was uh, incredible, and you'll see it throughout here how, how that is. And this is just a shot of it in the bay. Um, this is from the Zodiac. Again, really clear water, and I, I just kind of like liked how that shot made it look relatively small in the landscape. So we'll kind of get into that. I didn't want to talk about this, but... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I noticed there along, so your your ID essentially for the trip is your room number, and so my room number was four twenty three, and I started to realize over the course of some of the things that we had to do, like we had to get our boots fitted, and we had to you know try different things on whatnot, and uh, what I saw was I, I kept seeing four twenty three A four twenty three B, but there was never an, a name attached to four twenty three B. So when we got to the boat, I realized that I had my own room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Art, and you have your own room. Yes, I had oh, that. Yeah. That picture is literally not a hotel. It is the room on the boat. Yeah, what um, you know? What a single room goes for on this ship? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was it was like a, a crazy experience. I, I can't think. think of anybody better to have a yes. single room on his first trip than you. Yes, thanks. <laughs> I almost didn't want it because I knew I was gonna get get crap for that for sure. sure but, well, you did. But I, I had my, my dues paid because what I didn't realize uh, that I, I do get seasick apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, the boat traveling out of the bay and it was or the bay where we, we boarded the boat. And it was pretty rough, I guess. Um, I, I've never gotten seasick and uh, Thought I'd be fine, so I didn't take any of the proper medications and things like that. Pretty rough. <laughs> it ship wasn't. Had, I, the ship had stabilizers. You have no idea. I saw pictures of previous trips that Kevin has gone on, and yeah, I realized that I would have probably died. Yeah, you probably would have just <laughs> carry carry on the deck. But basically, what happened was uh, I took one of the seasick pills, but it was too late. Uh, I ended up throwing up <laughs> a couple times. Luckily, Kevin was kind of looking after me, and he brought the doctor down. <laughs> this was a, a picture of the Russian doctor. That no, was, not a Russian. He's a Chilean doctor. Oh, he's a Chilean? A Chilean uh, I thought doctor. Was Russian. Um, but yeah, he came down to my room, basically told me to, gave me the, what he called the magic pill, and he told me to put these, you know, I, I block the light out, take a nap. And uh, I, like I could really take a nap. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm sitting in the bed, thinking uh, I'm not a man. I'm not a man. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually saying that. What a I know. So no. Good I was idea. like, I was mortified. Oh. And there's like, there's you know, PA announcements going on, like, oh, cocktails, like in the in the lounge, and we're celebrating our voyage. And like, I'm just like, I can't even move. <laughs> so I felt. Uh, I felt a little bad there at the start, but I did rebound quickly. You did. And it's not, <laughs> this guy's name is Doc Sergio. Yes. And um, I, I've been with him on a journey before for 21 days when we did the um, South Georgia trip. And um, he's quite a character. He um, is. Quite yes. a character, yeah. funnier than the Dickens, uh, very dramatic. He has uh, things called D's, drink. Drugs, Drake. Yes. <laughs> drugs. <laughs> He's just, and he can just go on and on. And, yeah. Uh, it's always fun to see Sergio. Um, and uh, 
he he can make he has good bedside manner to say the least. Yes, <laughs> he was a, a spectacular guy, and he really looked out looked out after me. I wasn't the only one on the boat that no had half issues. the ship half the ship <laughs> half the ship was down for a while. So yeah, it's so, okay. You're excused, and yes, um, you I'm know, glad. Knock, I don't, knock on wood, it's never bothered me. I mean, that's yeah. You guys are lucky for sure. Uh, just natural <laughs> I, uh, explorers. I kind of knew it right away, and, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be trouble. It ended up it ended up going well. Um, this was a shot, uh, just a pano shot from my phone of the bridge of the ship. Uh, the captain was super cool guy. We'll get into more more of what he did for us along along the way here. Um, but again, the ship, uh, the bridge was accessible pretty much at any time. Uh, you can go up there and you can hang out with you know the, the staff and and the crew and. It was really kind of cool to sit up there. I sat up there probably for over an hour, just like hanging out and, and watching us like drive the ship. Um, so we're gonna kind of get in here. So this is the video. Um, again, it's about 15 minutes long, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a visual, uh, you know, storytelling journey of of, of our trip. Um, after the video, we'll bounce back to some, some more slides and some images, and I do have a couple of other videos. They're not as long, so this is more, kind of the longer, uh, longer video that, that was you know, kind of, kind of giving us the vibe of the trip. And Kevin actually has I haven't seen, I'm even so seen anxious this. to see this now. So. He's going to be seeing it on a delay, so he'll probably still be watching it when we come back. So. Yeah, I probably have a dumb <laughs> stare in my face, but you know where we're at. Oh, sorry. Antarctica, a location with vast landscapes, stirring seas, and unique wildlife. The epic tranquility and untouched purity of this region of the Earth is as close to peering back in time as you can get. Exploring this pristine ecosystem is a reminder of the history and the frailty of our great planet. As photographers, we have the opportunity to capture moments, moments that tell the story of our journey and allow us to share them with the rest of the world. Hopefully, our stories and our images will showcase the beauty and serve as a reminder to others how incredible our planet is. This is Antarctica, the seventh continent. Good morning from Antarctica. Uh, for many people, Michael included, this is their first landing on the Antarctic continent. And this morning we made our landing uh, in Antarctica Bay at a place called Brown's Bluff. And we're gonna wander around between the ice and these beautiful penguins and try to capture their spirit. It's amazing when they come this close to you. These guys will come up and visit you. You got little ones jumping and playing in the water. One of the shots that I'm establishing here is an establishing shot. So as I look out here, I've got penguins on the shore. I've got a couple of rock ledges and uh, rocks and then an iceberg out there and then the horizon. And it kind of is defining what 
uh, Brown's Bluff is all about. This guy wants his picture taken. He's a very friendly guy. There we go, buddy. Oh, yeah. Work it. <laughs> I love it. One of the other things that I love about bringing people down here is not just to teach them photography, but to see Antarctica through their fresh eyes. You know, I've done this so many times. It's still amazing, but it's not as amazing as the first time I came down here. And so you kind of live vicariously through the eyes of the people that have seen it for the first time. The expanse, the size, the sheer enormity of Antarctica is what takes people's breath away. We were just slowly moving through this channel. It was so beautiful. And we're looking at lots and lots of humpback whales. And I thought, you know, it would be the exact same whether we were here or not. And most of the time, this, this enormous expanse, at any one time, there's so few humans. I don't know, that was a, a moment for me that I felt like this place is just beyond belief. I was expecting to be wowed by the big things like the humpback whales, but we saw the tiniest bird in Antarctica today, the little storm petrels, entertaining little birds. And I think I got a lot out of that. And of course the ice, you know, just one more obsession you didn't need, ice. You ask me about my favorite experience at the moment, that's really difficult because the whole thing has been so wonderful and it's been changing. We've seen different kinds of things. The weather has been different. We had a little bit of snow this morning and yesterday was mostly sunshine and then we had fog. So we've been through the whole gamut of weather and the ocean has been rough, it's been flat, it's been a mirror. What can I say? It's just been overwhelming. When you're focused on your shooting and your camera, you end up in a zone and a world of your own. And it, it's particularly nice to do that when the, I find when the weather is not so good, there's fog, there's mist. It brings you a little bit more back to the days of the early explorers, what they were dealing with. The scale of things, looking at what seems like a relatively big ship silhouetted against a huge mountain uh, really makes you feel kind of small and insignificant in this continent. One of the aspects I've really enjoyed with this have been the zodiac trips we've had, where you get in the boats with some experts and we zip around in a bay area and it gives us a chance to really be up close and personal to some of the icebergs, the ice formations, some of the wildlife, the shore areas, but it gets you into places you wanna get and it gets you a closer exposure. Plus the willingness of the staff, either from the captain and moving the whole boat to the people running the Zodiacs, getting you where you wanna go, where it's safe, really brought it to you and made it a little bit more personal. It's sunset and um, we're in the middle of a whale lunging. These are humpback whales lunging. They come up for food and uh, they stick their uh, booleans in their, their mouths. They bring up the food from the deep and then they uh, all eat it together and circle around and they dive down and we get whale tail and we've been chasing these guys for nearly an hour now. And it's just beautiful sunset light and 
Um, they're kind of basically circling the ship. It's um, been an incredible day of wildlife, from minke whales to humpback whales to Weddell seals to just penguins galore. The days come at you fast down here in Antarctica, and today was one of those days where they just kept coming and coming. Uh, it's been a magnificent day, and uh, you go to bed tonight, and you're going to lie down, and you're going to think about it, and play it back in your head a whole bunch of times. And luckily, we have a lot of photography that we've done that uh, is going to keep us very busy when we get home. One thing that made this unique is both the presence of Kevin and Art Wolf. It's so obvious with him, his breadth of knowledge, not in terms of execution of shots, but his feeling for what makes shots good. I'm motivated uh, by a lot of things when I take a picture, but probably the primary one is to inspire, to inform, to educate people. You can learn composition and yeah. aesthetics and the rest of your life you'll and be learning as I right. I love traveling with Kevin. You know, he is almost like a child in a way. He's so exuberant and it's genuine. And that's what's really nice. Today is just a freaking marvelous day. Like right now, I got this iceberg coming up with a mountain behind it. Go to zoom land, it's, it gives okay. me my typical foreground and boom, boom. Teaching and taking pictures isn't a job for us. It's a passion. Next week, I'll be back in the office. I can't believe it. But right now, I'm in my happy place. I love the way the oblique light at sunset highlights the edges of tabular icebergs. And the moment you're focused on that, you know, there's a humpback whale that intrudes into your picture. I love that spontaneity. No, but as we're interviewing, I'm seeing platoons of uh, penguins jumping. You can see them out there. It's pretty cool to see. See them? Oh, yeah. yeah. And some came close to the ship, but I didn't miss a beat. I didn't get distracted. <laughs> One of the most challenging shots that I took was of porpoising penguins. Um, and they were Gen 2 penguins and they were really unpredictable about where they would come up and they'd be out of the water only for a split second. So out of, I don't know, probably a couple hundred frames, I had two or three that I thought were worth working on and I got two that I was really happy with. One thing I did that I really enjoyed was to go up on the bridge. I was surprised how nice, how accessible the bridge was. And at one time I actually went up there at night and was able to take a image of the first officer lit entirely by the light of the, of the instrumentation. And his willingness to help me out was really a lot of fun. So it was sort of a different image than many people have gotten here but just something I wanted to try, and they were very open to allowing me to do that. Oh, here, yes. And, and that was my Henry. Correct. Uh, we can also see glaciers in these charters. We'll see um, zodiacs, and we get to you uh, with an announcement in regards to the symbol Smile. 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 <laughs> a couple nights ago, we saw a very large iceberg in a very broad channel. And it was the only place for chin straps to haul themselves out of the water. And it was populated with hundreds of penguins. And that was unique for me. This late season travel, we're at the third week in February now, and a lot of the penguins have left the rookeries and now they're in these channels of clear water, you know, hunting food. And those icebergs then become their new rookery. Why I like Antarctica, okay, and as a photographer, you can photograph a lot of things that nobody else will be, ever be able to photograph because icebergs and snow melt and a lot of those things, it changes. It's a dynamic landscape. It does something to me. And actually, it's so important to me 
that I told my wife at one time after several years of dating, I said, you know, if you can get yourself a passport, I'll ask you to marry me and take you to Antarctica and we'll get married down there. Two and a half months later, she gives me an envelope with a passport in it. So I had to start thinking about how I was gonna propose. But we got married down here five years ago. We visited the place where I got married on this trip, Nico Harbor, which holds a, a dear and special place in my heart. Maybe that's another reason why. You know, the fact that the person I love most I could bring down here to show her the place that I love the most. And I think any one of you that have come on a trip to Antarctica will agree. And those that haven't, you need to do it so that you can feel the specialness here and the uniqueness here. And the fact that next week when you're home and you're back at your desk, you can stop for a second, close your eyes and remember where you were and go back to that happy place. Life is not measured by the number of breaths you take, but by the moments that take your breath away. And I hope you guys all have not only one moment, but several moments that you will just take. And it's like, for me, the Antarctic, it grabs your soul in your heart and you always have this calling to come back. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Radio. So we just got the end of the credits coming here. I hope everyone was able to view and enjoy that. Kevin, that was the first time you saw the video. What do you think? <laughs> oh, he cut to us. He's, he's in tears. <laughs> <sighs> Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kumbaya time, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, There's yeah. There's still something about this. I, you know, it, first off, the photography is so important to me. The people that we were there to be able to share that, you know, even to, to see you on your first trip there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that little thing with Deborah at the end, that, that was, <laughs> it was quite a moment. But, um, yeah. Um, uh, incredible video, Michael. I oh, can't thanks. tell you. I, I want to go home and watch it <laughs> several more times now. It's quite, quite special. Um, you know, we're going to be do. We do these trips usually once a year. Uh, you know, of course, we're in a kind of a turmoil right now. But the next trip is now scheduled for uh, November of 2021, which will go to South Georgia and Antarctica. It's a very long trip. Probably the last time I'll do that trip. But um, you, you, you can always expect. Uh, an incredible voyage. You make new friends that you'll be talking to forever. Mm -hmm. And I've had the privilege of taking a lot of people down there with me. Um, being with Art, he and I are like two peas in a pod. <laughs> he is a great guy. <laughs> um, uh, we, we've been around the world doing these things in many other places. But uh, it's quite something. So anyway, what's next? All right. Holy cow. <laughs> Well, I'm very ha happy with your reaction. I'm, I, I, it's funny that we're doing this live and people were able to see your, your first impression. But no, in all seriousness, I was able to, I did this video, you know, I went on this trip and, you know, I guess my primary job was to be an instructor, um, but I'm also, you know, a videographer and a photographer. So I wore a lot of hats, I, I, I guess, um, but you know, I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, you know, I, I'd make the joke about how I, my first job was at Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like, I, I feel like I've been doing video and photography and been in it like forever. It's like I, I, like I was born to do it. And so I feel, you know, having moved to Indianapolis and having a wife that, you know, ha has a job and that's able to allow me a little bit of freedom to kind of like do this type of stuff. Um, and to kind of follow my passion because uh, it, it, it's really a, like this, this was kind of a culmination for me, like a, a, a lifelong, you know, you know, career in, in photo and video. So to be able to kind of do everything all in one trip and to kind of play multiple roles and teach people and see people get excited and capture all, all these different images. And I've never been in a place before where you are literally like, just in completely in, like engulfed in uh, in the landscapes and stuff. You know, normally when you go to a place, there's like a specific spot. I know you've mentioned yeah. it before, putting the tripods in the same, same holes, holes and things like that, and taking this iconic image. But there, it, it, it's not like that. It's it's 
all it's it's ever changing it's uh th three dimensions it's everywhere so uh there was never a, a moment of rest unless it was completely dark <laughs> but even in that situation uh when it was nighttime you know you actually mentioned to me like you like to take a walk around the ship uh you know like before bed before you before you go to sleep and you know i joined you that one time and we're walking out there and <laughs> next thing you know you just hear and there was a whale right next to us. <laughs> just in the dark just looking 20 In the feet. dark, right feet. next to the ship. It's like, holy cow. And we had spent, you know, at least, you know, an hour tailing these things at a much further dis distance than we, were, than we were at that moment. So really, really cool to see that in person and just kind of feel that. Yeah, that was an on-camera moment. And, and, yes. <laughs> you know, I stress to people when they go to Antarctica or any place, but, you know, you've got to sometimes put the camera down and you know, switch the switch to contemplate and, mm. you know, do a little bit of thinking about where you are and what's going on. And I think, you know, with what we're seeing in the world today and what's happening and where no one knows where we're going to be tomorrow, that, yeah. you know, we need to think about this a lot more often these days. You know, it's time to start contemplating and start thinking and more thinking that, you know, we've had the lives that we have and that, uh, you know, we're able to do the things we're doing and hopefully as a a whole world we're going to get through the challenges that we're facing now. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like having gone on this trip, you know, in some ways I felt like, I, I mean, I was just in awe of, of the whole the place in general. Uh, but just being there, I felt an obligation to share it with everyone, <laughs> with everyone that well, I know. You've done a good job of that, and, my friend. And, every, and any, in any way that I can, uh, I, I want to share it and I want to, you know, be an advocate for you know the environment and and everything like that, and I think we're we're, we're learning a lot about even in the the state of things right now we're learning a lot about about that as a as a human race. So, anyways, <laughs> we're gonna move on here and uh, we're gonna jump back to the presentation. I uh, made it kind of like my goal to to take an image of every of all of our attendees on the on the trip, and I use an app called Tintype which I just I thought was fitting for the location that we were in. Uh, so it's kind of fun to, to, to photograph everyone at different points during the trip, um, kind of with that, that old, old time tin type look to them. So I, did had to, I had to add one person to this picture, and you may notice that it's the same picture that you saw earlier. I added the doctor just to make it even. <laughs> <laughs> but I put him next to me because uh, he, uh, he saved me on, the, on that trip. <laughs> Um, so we're going to kind of review a little bit of the, the places that we visited. I do have a few more videos, so, uh, you know. Don't go away. Yeah, don't go away. They're, they're even good videos. We're not, even good, we're not even going to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speaking of, we're not sponsored, but I want to thank Derek Tao, who's just here helping me because he has, he just wants to, and he wants to be here, and he, he, he like, likes to, the idea of sharing artistic viewpoints and things like that. That's what the box is all about. Obviously, it's, a, it's, a, it's hurt, hurtful to us of what's going on right now that we can't have some of our big events that we have here and do some of the things that we like to do here. But I do want to make sure that I say thank you to him uh, for being here and running this and also let you know that the box is still here and we are going to be doing live streaming from here and doing things uh, in this time of, of uncertainty, but we will, we will be back and our events will be back. <laughs> uh, so this was a, a couple of pictures from Brown Bluff that uh, we, you saw in the video. A lot of these places you obviously had seen in the video already. Uh, again, I won't go through these in any sort of depth, but if you're interested, you'll be able to see these uh, at photopxl.com uh, in the coming days. That was uh, revisiting the shot, my, my first steps. Um, one of the attendees took this for me. <laughs> Two little outfits you had. Did you and Lindsay yeah. go and buy that together? Your you know, <laughs> it's funny, like, Lindsay and, and my wife actually helped me in, in more ways than one, but uh, we went through REI and did all the research. We went through your email and, and everything and, and picked out everything great to wear and whatnot. You notice I have two different colored gloves on, which I, 
probably should have edit for this picture because it looks ridiculous. <laughs> but one is waterproof, one is not. And I just found it with the non-waterproof one, I was able to handle the camera much, much easier. But I also still <laughs> yeah, wanted to be able to dip my hand in the looks water. Looks like a guy that lost to. a glove along the way. <laughs> yeah, little clips back yes, in the day. <laughs> but shout out to my wife for helping me with, with the attire. I never was cold. I was never wet. And it was, uh, it all worked out really, really Speaking well. Speaking of your wife, a shout out to <laughs> Lindsay for allowing Michael to come on this trip. God, I was so, yes. afraid, I was so afraid you weren't going to say yes. Yeah. Anyway. It, it was obviously a once in a lifetime opportunity. She knew that. I knew that. And yes, she did stay home alone with our two sons, one being about four months old, the other two and a half, uh, with the help of my mother-in-law who... Also, without her, we wouldn't be able to have done this. Anyway, thank you for, <laughs> for allowing Michael to do that. Uh, yes. Number thank one, you. I hope it makes him a better person at home, and he owes you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that reminder. Uh, coming back to a couple images here. Um, this was the, one of the first pictures I took of a, of a penguin. Uh, this was a gen. Oh, I, I learned I learned more about penguins than I even I could have imagined. But this is a Gen two penguin. Uh, this was at our first landing, and uh, there were there were penguins everywhere. So it was like for me, it was extremely overwhelming to be put on land all of a sudden with not having a clear. I like having a clear like guideline of what I need to achieve, and I didn't know where to even begin. I, I didn't. Do I shoot a photo? Do I follow you? Do I shoot video? Do I, you know, what do I do in this situation? And there's just um, like hundreds of penguins like circling me, running around. There's attendees screaming out, look at that one, look at that one. So it was a, a very difficult scenario to be, to be placed in, but made it work. <laughs> this was uh, Nico Harbor. Uh, again, this is the place that that Kevin got married uh, that we visited, which is really cool to, to see in person because I've heard many stories about it, and you saw in the video that it was a, it's just an incredible place. A um, couple here's a picture <laughs> of <laughs> us <laughs> at that location, um, pretty close to where you actually got married. Yeah, pretty much. I kind of <laughs> zoned it out there pretty easily. Yeah, it was fun. It's fun. A uh, couple oh, penguins. Great shot. Great shot. <laughs> yelling at each other or something you can put in your captions there later uh this is another port that we visited you see the picture of art there i don't know how i took that p picture from another zodiac yeah. he saw me pointing the camera at him and he still managed to pose for the he, shot he, has a, <laughs> he knows how to do it uh a little bit about Art Wolf. Uh, I, I hope the name at least sounds familiar to everyone, because um, it should. He's one of the, the best landscape wildlife photographers on the planet. He's been doing it forever. Um, I've, I've personally, you know, I've, I've heard the name and followed his work for years. And to like just all of a sudden be like hanging out with him <laughs> and like having dinners and the three of us like kind of just BSing and stuff yeah. like that was it was like kind of another surreal moment for me uh, on the trip for sure. And uh, it, if you actually, you know, since everyone's at home watching, you know, looking for stuff to watch, there's a show on Netflix called Tales by Light. And uh, it's been out for a while, so you might have to dig through there and find it. But the first season, it, actually two episodes of the show have Art Wolf as the primary subject. Uh, of, it's about photographers and kind of out being in nature and capturing different things. So you should check that out if you, if you can. You should. <laughs> uh, cutting back here, you saw this in the video. Uh, a lot of people have asked, you know, what was the, the greatest moment of the trip or what was the most uh, you know, you know, crazy picture you got? This was definitely up there on the on the list. Uh, it was incredible to see this. Uh, they're called. Is it called a rookery? Is that well? They're, it's, they're, when the penguins are on the ice, they're a rookery. I guess you could yes. call them that. But that is that's an iceberg. This large assemblage <laughs> of penguins on a floating iceberg in the middle of a of a canal is just. I don't even know how to explain it. It didn't seem real, and I think what happened was is the boat passed this. And, and we're having supper. Yeah. With wall to wall glass. Yes. You know, windows looking out on this. And I don't think 
like some people saw it, some people didn't because they were in their rooms and all of a sudden, you know, somebody got word to the bridge that, you know, you ne we need to go back and like... Well, the captain was sitting at, you know, table away from us and yeah. he radioed, turn it around and yeah. then the adventure began. <laughs> and all of a sudden so the, the captain gets in the boat and he circles the iceberg and pulls up right in front of the iceberg and just kind of like sits there. Yep. And, just... <laughs> and you saw like the video, of the penguins like jumping out of the water. They had to wait for a wave to come up for them to jump out to get high enough. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so funny because it's funny when we, there's, we, penguins are just funny to begin with. I mean, they just do the oddballest things. But, you know, for us, we were there and like everybody's along the side of the ship, you know, a hundred people. Yeah. And, you know, this wave would come up and 10 penguins would come out and they would start scrambling and one by one <laughs> a couple like one would fall would off yeah. and slide back in and people are cheering the ones that go up yeah. it was so much fun to do that you it know? was it was a surreal moment for sure and actually for the photography junkies out there it was getting close to being you know like twilight or nighttime um so kevin did a whole article on this particular uh you know, shot this particular location. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's it's on, on Photo PXL. PXL and and uh, be sure to check that out because you, you can really see some of the detail and the amount of penguins on this is just it was mind boggling. And again, here's a closer shot of some of the guys waiting to, to jump up, some of them jumping up on there. Pretty cool. Uh, this was my personal favorite location, uh, if, if you can have a favorite location. <laughs> oh my. Um, I was a, just a huge <clears throat> fan of the icebergs. So this shot here is what they call a tabular iceberg, which is an iceberg that kind of breaks off of the ice shelf. Now that thing, I, I can't even estimate how large it is uh, visually. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of yards, feet, yeah, whatever you want to say. <laughs> but uh, th this next shot will kind of give you a little bit of a zoomed in view. So that there is a, a much closer view. We obviously can't get too close because literally any of these chunks could fall off at any time. <laughs> and they, they cause what the expedition staff called flash waves. So they, uh, you know, if a big chunk falls in, it doesn't take very long for this giant wave to be coming down. No, I secretly kind of wanted that to happen, so we had to oh, haul at. I wanted to kind of climb the whole <laughs> surface up and get to the top. And yeah, stuff. exactly. It didn't look too harmful to me. It was, uh, I just, I was infatuated with these, mm -hmm. these, and just the detail and the layers like you would see in a tree from the years of compaction and just thinking about how long, you know, these things have been there and it was, uh, I don't know, I found it, you know, it's ice, right? But I, for some reason, it was very interesting for me to see in person. There's a, a, actually a piece. Now that piece is basically entirely disconnected from the main, yeah. the main thing. So it could just, it seemed like it could just topple over at, at any time. Uh, that gives you a little bit of scale here, uh, one of the Zodiacs. And it was cool in this bay because you can kind of just literally cruise around on, in the Zodiacs. You could go up to different icebergs, some big, some small, um, kind of, frame up different shots and things like that. So this was a really, really cool uh, experience. This was an, another uh, iceberg, just, just amazing. <laughs> mind boggling. Oh, like, this isn't even really, it, like people have asked, do you alter that color and, and whatnot? Because, you know, you can do that, but I, there's really no alterations other than the fact that I probably added some contrast to the shot and things like that. Um, it really looked like this <laughs> uh, in person, which is which is kind of crazy. And that one piece there, I, I think it was just the way that it's laying. It, that's just snow on top, so it makes that piece uh, look much much more white. Again, this one, I, I'm not sure of the scientific rationale behind why some of the ice is much bluer. <laughs> well, there is quite a bit of it, but we won't go into yeah, it now. Yeah, I'm sure. It all to do with compressing <laughs> the ice and yes. how much light gets through and exactly. all there, sorts of things. There was a lot about We had a lecture on it. Yes, there was a lot you, about you compression. You were probably in your cabin <laughs> lying down. That was one of those early <laughs> presentations. <laughs> um, again, the color, uh, this was just a simple reflection of one of the icebergs in the water. Um, Kind of a cool abstract. Uh, this is one of those oh, kind of landscape shots. These that clouds, sky, that yeah, sky just came up like in ten minutes. We were photographing whales, yeah. and all of a sudden we looked up, and these these beautiful clouds were just coming in like yeah. This. And it was crazy too because a lot of the trip, you know, we it was not sunny. Um, I think we only really had one day of one sun, day, yeah. and it, it wasn't <laughs> even the full day. 
but that that few minutes like i probably got hundreds and hundreds of shots of just varying distances and and whatnot I, I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like if it was sunny the whole time or if it was you know if we didn't have that experience of some sun um, it just it would be entirely different <laughs> in, in Antarctica so, you just take it as it comes. yeah you just never know I didn't I'm not saying it was it was bad and by any means I'm just saying it's different like it's interesting to think about like oh what if I was in that exact same spot but it you know was sunny or whatever so uh, this is kind of a zoomed in shot of one of them the mountains there this too again you mentioned the uh, the ever-changing landscape the dynamic landscape you know I was actually in the lounge of the ship uh, and part of my, you know, being an instructor, I was helping one of the attendees in Lightroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm showing him some techniques in Lightroom and whatnot, and I look out the window and I literally saw that gigantic piece tumble down. It was the, like an explosion. It really was, and it sounded like an explosion. So I told him, I was like, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran outside just in enough time to still kind of capture that where it had crashed into the water. Uh, but again, like, what a ridiculous thing to see in person. I know, just, <laughs> it, you know, this, it gets one surprise after another, literally. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, you can't script this. No, absolutely. And I, we talked to some of the um, expedition <clears throat> staff because when you're out in, yeah, when you're out in the, um, in the zodiacs and you're kind of close to these icebergs and you see like these pieces that seemingly could fall in at any point in time. You know, you, you bring up like how many, you know, how often do these things fall into the water? Like how, how often does this happen? And, and one of the, the guys that was driving our, my boat, you know, he mentioned like he had saw 12, you know, things falling uh, in one trip once. And then he's gone several trips without seeing any. So it literally like you just never know. Nope. You never know what you're, you're going to get at one time. And it's crazy, too, when you're close. And I, I'll bring it up. I have a better picture of it here. Uh, as we as we go along, but this was uh, Paradise Paradise Bay, and again this was another another spot, a lot of penguins, um, you know, lots of wildlife, seals and whatnot. Uh, I tried to I tried to use that 360 camera at least a few times. the The battery didn't love the cold, but I was able to nab a, a few shots here and there. Um, this one just completely surrounded by landscape and, and ice and, and what pretty fun it was pretty pretty fun I, I hope the the attendees like these shots um oh this is a quick video it just a if you have good sound on your computer you might want to turn it up um you'll you're going to hear that the air popping out of these this is just a piece of ice that is sitting next to the zodiac so it's not very big i could probably you know pick it up if i was able to you know stand on land or whatever um but Kind of listen to this. So that kind of gives you yeah, a sense. Kind of snap crackle. Yeah, pop. it's a little bit like popcorn sound, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and again, like I said, like that little piece there off to the bottom right, it was probably about that size. We pulled up right next to it, and I heard it like popping, and I asked if the driver would kind of like cut the engine and we just kind of listened to this thing for a couple couple seconds or whatever it was, was pretty fun uh, but again looking at this particular shot like that that glacier is kind of mangled up and you know could could seemingly fall or drop pieces at any time but it's not just like falling out into the water it's like collapsing in on itself so when you're sitting there in the quiet all you can hear like what sounds like thunder you know like things yeah, like cr crunching and cracking and dropping in and it's just like this crazy sound um and you don't see anything dropping in no, the water. It, it, <laughs> I, I always ask the drivers to, when you go into a bay like that just to turn the engine yeah, off yeah 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 because first off there's an down there there's an immense quiet there's nothing else that can make noise right and you know you hear birds you can hear whales off in the background you can hear you know, sounds from seals on ice. You can hear things falling and crackling. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really truly mind bending because it's it's so <laughs> so different that way. Um, it was. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> just sit there and, and to take it all in and, and hear those sounds and realize that you're in one of the coldest, harshest environments in the world, and there's more life 
than you can find anywhere else. Yeah. It's really something else. It was, I think it was in this bay too that I kind of, I was doing a 360 shot, which is nice when you have that kind of camera because you don't you need to pay attention yeah. to it. because <laughs> it's, it's just recording in all directions. So I kind of took that moment and I just like looked around and like took a deep breath. And just, that was one of those moments where I tried to like realize where I was on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like a surreal, I had a little bit of like anxiety there for a brief second. I'm like, man, what if I just like fell in the water? <laughs> and like, uh, you know, I'm just like stuck out here pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the, we have life preservers. We could recover your body. Exactly. <laughs> Um, jumping on here, I actually did manage to capture this piece of ice falling. Um, it's kind of relatively large. I was actually photographing because I thought it was like a cool, the way that dark line kind of drops in there. Um, and I was taking a picture of that. And next thing I know, this huge piece breaks off and, uh, and it drops into the water and you can see it like hitting there, um, which I thought was cool. And like just out of happenstance, there's like that, I don't know, like inlet or that dark area on the right for which kinda... years i've been trying to get the zodiac drivers to drive into one of those <laughs> oh yeah and this is why you're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of crazy um this and again this is another one uh just of ice but like look at that formation like how does that even happen <laughs> how long does that take you know and and just the way that that's formed is pretty crazy cool backdrop on it um which kind of puts it into perspective. Uh, so this next shot, a lot of people asked me, he's like, so did you jump in? And I was like, well, actually, <laughs> funny uh, story. Yeah, so? So we're gonna play this video here. I'll cut our mic so you don't hear us laughing. <laughs> here we go. Just want to get some comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, uh -uh. the Polar Plunge, which was really, really awesome. I would say of the 65 pe passengers on the boat, there were only 14 people that did it. Well, um, yeah. Well, I, you, I know you've done it in the past. It, 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 it sometimes <laughs> involves major shrinkage and other issues. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I don't even know how to describe it because I've never really put myself into a, like a ice bath like that before mm. so it you get out and you immediately feel like there's a million things like prick, yeah, prickling like you yeah yeah um it wasn't that bad like it you know it could have been much worse i wouldn't want to hang out in there for more than a few seconds <laughs> the staff was really good about it you have to wear like a belt uh just in case and um it was really, really fun. Was Sergio like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's got like the defibrillator, defibrillator when yeah, he like, came back on board. That has to be a stressful time for the staff. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, the staff is probably pretty freaked out right now. But uh, it was a really, really cool opportunity. You got some incredible shots there, like from the the, the next deck up, which oh, yeah. is really, Just really when awesome. You're hitting you the water, it. yeah, <laughs> which was really fun. Uh, this next shot here again, just kind of. Just a standard landscape shot. Nothing, nothing nice about this one. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Yeah. But yeah, again, you can shoot, uh, and you've mentioned this before, that you could shoot thousands and thousands of pictures, and you have so many different things, so many different ways of shooting it, um, where you can zoom in and kind of like focus on some of these tighter, like abstract, uh, you know ripples in the ice and like I showed you the reflections in the water, the color, 
uh, all sorts of different things that you can do. And that was kind of fun for me when it came to the attendees to see their different perspectives on things and to see somebody shot and be like, oh man, I wish I had shot that. Oh one. yeah, there's some, <laughs> some people got some amazing things. Yeah, you know, I know like, Matthew got some really cool shots of porpoising penguins, which I, I never really got a good one. Um, so well, I was a, a little bit jealous that's of that. Miss. He really nailed that. You saw that in the video there. Um, this is just a, you know, like a tight shot of the ice, but it turned into black and white. It just looks like rock basically, which I thought was kind of cool. This one, I feel pretty good about this one. Cause I don't think many people saw this. <laughs> we were going through, this was during that, uh, we actually had a, one of our dinners out on the deck outside. And it was like a, a picnic, like a here, yeah. picnic or yeah. a barbecue. Like I told everyone that it was like a bear's tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably about the same temperature. And we were out there eating sausages and like hanging out, which kind of felt ridiculous. Well, so, but it was <laughs> such a beautiful night. Too. It was incredibly like the sun, we had the sunset. Um, but this shot, I kind of walked over to the side. There wasn't many people over where I was. And I, we were riding in the boat at this time. So this was very quick. It just kind of, you know, we passed it and it was gone in just a few minutes, but I really liked how the light was hitting it, like the shape of it and, and whatnot uh, looks kind of cool. But this particular trip, uh, this picture was probably my favorite shot of the whole trip. I don't know necessarily why, <laughs> but I really liked those, like I said, those tabular icebergs. And then we had this crazy sunset where the sun was like shooting down and Oh, just like lighting highlighting, up the lower clouds yeah, highlighting the clouds and then the water and um, that this particular shot would probably be one that I would print out. Um, I also like this one that's a little bit zoomed in and you can see that cloud that it's kind of like highlighted by the sun and some of the texture in the ice and just thinking about how big that is probably like oh, shit, like the yeah. size of like the merchandise mart in Chicago or something. Oh, like it's bigger that. than that. Bigger than that yeah. even, <laughs> which is just crazy, mind boggling. Uh, this one too. And again, we're moving, like the boat's moving relatively fast. So this thing is just like con like constantly changing and the light's changing. So I, you know, at this, this point, I think we were actually on our like decks of our, mm -hmm. of yeah, the our ship. patios. We had, we had patios on the, on the ship, which was great. Um, and a quick thing about that ship as well. The ship was designed for tour tourism. It, it was, it, it's made for, um, to be comfortable and, and, and whatnot. You know, a lot of the trips that Kevin has taken in the past, he was on ships that were not necessarily that way. They, uh, were, they, they were, were designed as expedition ships. Well, actually, they were converted <laughs> spy ships. Con converted yeah, Russian conversion, spy ships. Yeah, conversion ships from like, you know, military or yeah, research vessels and things like that. And I've seen some of the pictures and videos of the rockiness, and it was pretty, pretty insane for sure. Uh, again, just more, you know, landscapes, the way the sun was hitting the top of this one, I thought was really cool. And kind of bouncing around inside there. Uh, another one here with uh, just an iceberg and that kind of orange and blue, which was really cool. It made me wish that we had more sunsets, but I actually like that we kind of only had one, too, because <laughs> it made it fe feel more, more special. Um, but again, this one was, was really... Really, it's a cool scene. This is when we saw those whales yep, as yep. well, um, <clears throat> whales feeding. We did not see many other boats uh, along the way. Uh, I think we maybe saw like three. three. And it wasn't even like we were passing by. You don't see them for very long. Uh, but it was kind of a cool moment that we saw this one kind of sailing out as the sun was shooting down. And a kind of a panorama there of uh, as we were sailing. Good eye us. on that one. <laughs> I like on the far right, you can see that sun yeah. kind of like shooting there, which is kind of cool. The light is so beautiful down there. Yeah, it was really, really, really cool. Um, so Deception Island, this is towards the end of the trip. We don't have too much more here. I didn't know how long this would end up being. We do have another. Well, we have a little bit. I mean, everybody bit. has time, I think. Yeah, right just now. sit around. That's, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing in here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So there are, a few, there are a few more videos that I want to sh showcase. Um, so hang in there. If you're Please, we appreciate you <laughs> sticking with us. Um, It'll be worth it. Deception Island here was, was really cool because uh, it had a cool like vibe. To, it's an active volcano is essentially what it is, <laughs> which is a, a crazy. Of, a lot of novels written about that, you know, with yeah. UFOs and all sorts of crazy things. Deception yeah. Island is very famous. I can't imagine 
you know, they, they don't they make jokes about it, but the thing could go off at any. any Were you moment. worried about that too? No, I wasn't worried about it, but I thought about so it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ship would ride out. There the was if there was one thing I wanted on the trip, it was I wanted to be hauling away from something. <laughs> I think that would have been kind of cool. Oh, but anyways, so the the water is heated up, and and the land is kind of heated up by this volcano that is underwater essentially. Uh, but it heats up the beach and it creates this like steam and that's actually one of the expedition staff in that shot uh which you know he's all decked out in his gear and the glasses and stuff so kind of a kind of a cool perspective um and again this was on deception island um kevin's famous for his love of rust oh this <laughs> well first off with deception island it's a, it's a whaling station yes and it, it got wiped out in a volcano i think it was in 69 or something so um, you know, they all had to run across the bay and get picked up and rescued. But um, there's something about Arctic and Antarctic rust, the way it <laughs> rusts. And, you know, I, I've made tons of beautiful abstracts and, and details of rusted bolts and things. And uh, these are whale blubber cookers and things. It's, it's crazy. quite a place to go there and see all the artifacts all over the place. And the buildings and things like that are collapsing. Unreal. But... Um, Oh, God, I love that rust. Yeah, it's cool. People, you it's, go to South Pole to get rust. Yep. That's true. <laughs> and it's a good feeling, too, that this is all rusting because it's not active. Oh, it hasn't been seal. for a long time. <laughs> Those little buggers, man, they pop out of everywhere. They do. They? This one actually kind of freaked me out a little bit. He was eyeing me down uh, for sure, one of the, the fur seals there. Um, this actually, it's a little bit of an abstract shot, but it's actually looking up at the mountain I don't under I don't quite understand the science behind the why the colorations are so so different and so vivid, but I'd have to look look that up and see. Yeah. But that shot was just kind of a kind of a cool a cool perspective. Um, this is in Whalers Bay. It's a sh shot of me with my camera. <laughs> uh, this kind of again just a shot of the boat in that bay. Kind of like that. God, I like that ship. Kind of, yeah, that ship was just incredible. It was almost like an obligation to shoot the ship in every location because it looked I know, so I, cool. I, mean, I, shot, <laughs> I shot one dead on and put it yeah, up on Instagram. I liked that shot. It's a just lot. so cool. <laughs> and kind of the one of the attendees down there walking, walking the beach, and uh, another close up of that that steam on the on the beach there. This is towards the this towards literally the towards the end Aww. here. I know. <laughs> in uh, Half Moon Island, which is another cool cool spot. The chin strap penguins. <laughs> I think you, you mentioned them looking like little soldiers. Yeah, because they look like they have little <laughs> pit helmets on. Which is... And, you know, then, and then their little black line that goes under their chin. Yeah. So that's why they're called chin straps. It makes sense. It was really... They were really funny. Like how, who invented guys. that? I don't even know. <laughs> and it was cool. These were the penguins that were actually on that iceberg. So these, this was the type of penguin that was on that iceberg. And just kind of that. Just magnificent, yeah, magnificent, overwhelming scenery. Glacier off in the distance <laughs> is insane. <laughs> yeah, I do. It would be cool to get an elevated shot for all you uh, NERC FPV fans out there. <laughs> yeah. It would be cool to get a drone up and uh, fly it up high, but we weren't allowed to bring drones. And for, for a valid reason, you know, you don't want to disturb the wildlife. And if by some chance you were to crash or lose it, they don't want to. They're very serious about the environment and making sure that they're uh, you know, maintaining its pristine, pristine nature, which is good. Uh, there's me just hanging out. That was, I, that was when the moment when I, I felt like it was coming to an end and I didn't really want it to end yet. <laughs> uh, it did, it, everything went by so, so fast. <laughs> like the last day of summer camp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or winter camp. Winter camp. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another video here that I put together. Uh, some of the stuff that we talked about in this video didn't really fit into the story of the other video. Um, but I do think it's equally as, as important. It's not as long. It's probably five to five or six minutes. Um, but it kind of goes into some, some of the detail of this other stuff that we, we came across. So we'll play that here next. Cool. It's Kevin Raber at Photo PXL and Rock Hopper Workshops, and I'm in Antarctica today. Been very privileged to have Art Wolf as uh, an instructor with me, along with Michael Durr, 
Art and I have traveled around the world doing a number of workshops together. He motivates me every time I see his pictures. He motivates me every time I'm with him. We have a lot of laughs together. It's really nice to travel with somebody that's genuinely happy with sharing his knowledge, but he loves taking pictures. He loves looking at pictures. And that's a great thing, as do I. I can't wait to get back to my room, upload images, and look at them on the computer. And we photographed almost every corner of the world together. We're taking about 30 people with us and highlighting the land that we both love. You know, Antarctica is a unique place. It's one of the few places where a population of people haven't really occupied. Yeah, there's a few research stations, but it's so hostile and in a beautiful way, austere, that no population lives down here. And that's in fact the draw. You know, I want to fulfill what people expect of an instructor. So I'm pointing out things to the attendees on this uh, great adventure, but I'm also working on various projects. One of which is called Primordial. It's beauty in nature. It's everything from the auroras to lava exploding out of a mountain. And here in Antarctica, it's just the austere, rugged landscape. I'm also working on a book called Wild Lives that will come out in a couple of years. And it's a look at international wildlife in the age of man. Tourism is increasing in the Antarctic and with that then comes more restrictions. Having said that, people that come down here won't even feel that because they're put in close proximity to penguins and seals. Certainly we're in zodiacs circling icebergs at a safe distance. We found some amazing ice in Plano Bay. Plano Bay is a place where icebergs go to die. It's called the Iceberg Graveyard. Our trip through the Lamar Channel was a little foggy and lousy weather, snowing and so forth. You've got to be prepared in Antarctica because you're going to have great days and then you're going to have gray days. This is a gray day. You notice I don't have a camera today, but I'm at the very forefront of the ship, the bow. I've done some photography of the ice flows and the seals, but right now I'm going to kind of do what's called contemplation and watch the world go by. And speaking of snow, What's really been incredible on this trip and very different is the fact that we're on Deception Island right now and I've been on this island and it's been covered with snow. And we were in Nico Harbor the other day and it was usually covered with snow. But according to the expedition team, which we've had discussions with, things are changing down here. Things are getting warmer. When it used to snow, it's now raining. Uh, the conditions are changing. Yes, you know, there is an environmental change happening and it's happening probably faster here in Antarctica than it is anywhere else. Generally, this is all deep, deep snow. So it's kind of interesting to see how climate change in Antarctica is really pronounced as we are walking on bare rock. I think we get a measure of the speed of climate change basically by looking at how fast glaciers are receding in North America's Arctic, but also here in Antarctica, suddenly we have satellite photos of icebergs the size of states breaking off from the Weddell Sea ice shelf or the uh, Ross ice shelf. And these are really indications of what's happening with our climate. Sure, there's hot days in North America and cold days, but down here it's unequivocal that climate is changing and it's a great measure. So these are hot spots. These are hot spots for the news and for people's awareness. As rugged and wild as this land is, it's also extraordinarily fragile. There's millions of penguins that rely on the pristine waters and the environment for survival. We leave no trace when we leave a place other than, of course, tracks in the ice that quickly melt out. And this group of instructors and staff are really enabling us to move without harm. These people are basically now the stewards of this area and what a wonderful job they're doing. There are a group of people that are really, that care passionately about Antarctica and want to want it to be there for future generations to see the same very pristine, untouched world that it, it is today. You gotta be here to, to experience it. It's not just all cold, it's not just one thing, but the over-experience, 
even the effort we have to go through every time we go out in terms of putting on the multiple layers of clothes and the overboots and being tagged in and out so the, the crew can keep track of our whereabouts, the care they take for the environment in terms of where we track. You don't need to be a photographer. As a matter of fact, they we're often um, admonished for spending so much time with our cameras that we don't spend enough time letting it soak in. And that's something you can't experience until you're here. Everybody, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for being part of the Rockhopper Workshop. Thanks for being a member and a reader of Photo PXL, where we're trying every day to enhance your vision. So that was kind of the end there. Huh. Um, just again, this I put that video together because it was talking more about the environment and some of the idea of it becoming more more available for tourism and stuff, which I, again, I don't think is a bad thing because I do think that they're doing it the right way <laughs> and making sure that, you know, the, the land and the animals are protected. Um, we leave no trace, as Art said in the video. And um, it is, I do think it, it is life changing <laughs> to be down there and, and to witness some of that purity because you just don't see it anywhere else. But it's, it's, it's such a change. And yeah. I'm, I'm very serious about this. As Art said, you know, we were walking on stone. Um, I've been down there in seasons, even in February, where there's snow right up to the edge and sometimes so high, you've got to take a, a little shovel and make a stairway so you can get to the top of the snow. <laughs> That's cool. And, you know, this is not, you know, just melting snow and raising sea levels. This is affecting the, the wildlife. The penguins, you know, need to stay on ice. They need to breed. Mm. Uh, you know, there's a whole environment that they need to do. You know, when we go into the northern areas, you know, the polar bears are getting pushed out. You know, they need the sea ice to hunt and they're being forced to land uh, and, and live on land that they've never done before. I mean, you know, when you see this personally, uh, and specifically because I've seen it for since, well, coming there since 2004, 15, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years, the change that I've seen, and especially this year, yeah. That last landing that we took, at, yeah. um, at, 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 it was just astounding. Um, now, maybe it's an off year. Next year is going to be full of snow. Uh, who knows? But, you know, this seems to be a trend, and it seems to be something we're seeing more of. You know, mm. penguins can't handle rain, right. especially the little ones. Their, their feathers, uh, until they've molted, can't shed the mm -hmm. water. Right. So, you know, this is affecting a lot of things. So we're going to be watching a lot of this and probably doing a lot more. And with Rockhopper Workshops, we're looking at a lot of things that we can do to help, you know, give back to the, the carbon footprint and mm -hmm. uh, the environment. So uh, we need to, you know, if one thing, I, I guess the, another message. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we haven't woken up to what germs can do and, you know, <laughs> the things that we're facing right now as a world, you know, the next thing that we need to do is we come out of this thing yeah. is say, well, you know, we just learned a lesson. They said someday this could happen. That's well, true. we've been saying a lot of things can happen with the climate change. And, you know, damn it, that's the next thing we've got to deal with. Or we're not going to be on this planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're learning some valuable lessons. That's true. All right. Off my soapbox. I'm sorry. But <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of things that are hitting us right now. Yeah. And if we're not learning and listening... Um, you know, we've got to stress and, and make sure the leaders that we, you know, elect the positions there yeah. do that. It's time for change. Yeah. And, and we've it, got to learn some lessons. It was weird kind of being in this situation mm -hmm. in the early stages of, of the virus that's going around right now. And I mean, we had to sign, you know, paperwork that, had, our that yeah, it had our temperatures taken on the boat. And it was still early. Well, your, was, your roommate was a Chinese guy. That that's, was, that's true. Wasn't yeah, allowed to come on a he trip. was not allowed. I, my roommate that was supposed to be on the trip uh, wasn't allowed to come because he was from Hong Kong. So and that, you know, it's, it was a precaution, I'm sure. But like, can you imagine if, you know, we were on that boat and like the virus was on that boat, we would all been in a lot of trouble. So yeah. um, it's kind of a, it was a crazy time and it's now, it, you know, looking back on it now, <laughs> seeing all that has happened since then, um, we were very lucky and very fortunate to even have been able to go on the trip first off and then again to be safe and everything on, on our return home. And there's a few of the expedition staff actually that I've been following on Instagram and stuff, and they are just now coming back home. So I can only imagine yeah. <laughs> what it's, their trips have been like. But 
We'll jump back to the presentation here and go through these last remaining pictures. There's just uh, one, one more video and then another quick one, but almost done here. Uh, that's just a shot. There's a few pictures of me on the trip, but that's okay. I'm used to that. <laughs> uh, but I like this one. Just kind of, you can see the, the boat sailing there in the background. Just a cool backdrop. People always ask, so what did you eat on the boat? This kind of gives you a little synopsis of that. <laughs> there was we, a lot of lamb, well. a lot of duck, uh, good breakfasts. Yeah, the boat was like, I mean, it was like any hotel that you would, you would stay in and, and have amazing food, amazing staff. Um, just really a, a kind of a surreal experience. Um, and having heard some of the stories of past expeditions and seeing how, hearing how rough it was and things like that, uh, I felt like I got off easy in more ways than one. Yeah, but, you did. <laughs> uh, this kind of gives you, again, a little over, overview of the places that we visited that you just saw and all this content here. And again, we'll be sharing this stuff on photopxl.com, so if you want to revisit it or if you have stopped watching and <laughs> are interested in learning more about this, uh, that'll all be up there. This is one of the, uh, I jumped outside in the late evening to try to get some night shots and I, I liked this one a lot of the boat sailing, sailing at night and then a shot of me on the, <laughs> on the front uh, of the boat. contemplative moment? Yes, that was another one of those moments for sure. <laughs> Such a nice ship. <laughs> uh, this was the Antarctica 21 staff gave us this kind of synopsis of the types of animals that we saw. Uh, again, that w we'll make this available if you need, if you want to see it. And this, uh, again, just kind of reviewing some of the animals and wildlife. I, I actually liked these penguins the best of the, the three species that we saw, the Adelis. I don't know. I like the white eyes, and I think they always look surprised, which is kind <laughs> of fun. <laughs> uh, the Weddell seals I thought were, were the, the cutest of the seals, and this one with the big eyes was, uh, was pretty funny. I think he was kind of freaked out by us, to be honest, but that's okay. And the Gen 2s, these guys were characters for sure. You can see a little bit of, this guy's probably like a teenager or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Got a little bit of They're mischievous uh, too, the, you know? the hair left on the back, which I, I found, or I learned that they can't really reach, so they can't get it off, which is kind of funny. Um, this is something that Art mentioned in his, in his interview. You know, you're, you're concentrating on one thing and then something else pops into the frame. So if you kind of look off to the bottom right there, there's a penguin jumping out of the water which is the things that I tried to capture the whole time. Never could get a good shot. And I didn't even know that this was in the shot until <laughs> I got home and looked at it on the computer. I was Beautiful like, oh, picture. I, was like, picture. I was like, I got him jumping. So yeah, that's a, a real shot. I wish it was about 900 times tighter, but that's okay. <laughs> this is another uh, one of my favorite shots just because that the way that bird's framed up there in the crack in the ice. But there's also a seal on the bottom left, <laughs> just kind of a crazy scene. This one too, you, you'd think it's Photoshop. I did brighten up that, that hole a little bit. That's all I did for the most part, but framed up that bird. Uh, I followed him for a while. Like kinda, he was kind of hanging out in the water here on the bottom right, and then he took off and got a little bit of, a lot of, lot of luck on that, that shot for sure. Uh, these two guys just hanging out on the, <laughs> on the top of the iceberg. We're, I think I posted this one to my Instagram, kind of wondering what they were thinking about. Leopard seal. This guy was, I don't know, showing off for us or something. This guy hanging out. It looked like he was sunbathing, but definitely no sun in sight. <laughs> <laughs> the first seal, this kind of, again, puts into perspective that no snow um, kind of scene. And this too, again, with the whales just seemingly popping up wherever at any point in time but i really like this shot because of the boat and then also if you look at the very top right there's some people hiking up there uh, must um, be. that's nico harbor yeah from the yeah. one of our last uh spots there and then again i did i did want that the the whale tail shot that you actually got in the sunset uh, well, <laughs> i wanted that I'm type of I shot got something because you got so many good ones i wanted that shot but this shot i was happy with um, kind of wish those little pieces of ice weren't there in the front, but that's okay. I, I like the action in the shot, but I did want that kind of iconic whale tail shot. Never really got it. I guess I'll have to go back. No, well, maybe. <laughs> takes a few trips. <laughs> this was, the, this was this best, oh. <laughs> the best I got, and I, I wish it was, again, a little tighter, but that's okay. Um, 
again, for the photo nerds out there, I had a 70 to 200 as my longest zoom. And uh, definitely wish I had the 100 to 400. But again, um, I didn't mention uh -oh. this in the beginning. We were only allowed to bring 44 pounds of stuff total. That included our, our clothing and our gear, which for me was seemingly an impossible feat, but somehow managed to stay at least under 50 pounds, I think. So. And again, we did also see the killer whales, um, again, from the boat. Uh, but this is kind of a cool shot of them swimming with the other boat in there in the frame. And we saw, oh, we saw, a, saw a few like humans. Shackled. <laughs> 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 this was a little bit of a staged photo with one of the expedition staff. His name is Keegan. He took this picture for me. And uh, it came out pretty cool. I like well, it. Well, Lindsay will hang that on the wall. Man, yeah, that, maybe we should print this one off. That a, a, a re, that's a good refrigerator shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so this, <clears throat> this is actually another quick little video. <laughs> oh, my. This is the... As I said... Uh, in the beginning, you know, the weather was nice and calm while we were inside these bays and blocked by the wind, but we had no choice <laughs> when it came to getting back to the land where the airplane was. So this was actually a quick video of our trip um, from the boat to where we were going to take off to leave Antarctica. It was one of the <laughs> roughest trips we had on the whole trip. <laughs> <clears throat> So that kind of <laughs> gives you a little bit of, uh, of a feel of what it was like going back to the main boat. <laughs> it was, uh, I was kind of glad that Keegan was our, our Zodiac driver for that one because we kind of, we hit it off uh, on, the, on the boat there a couple times and uh, I think we had a good time when everyone else was cowering and screaming. <laughs> well, you know, if you, you, you got to take the right attitude towards it. Oh, you, yeah. If you're going to get beat up, might as well get beat up with you yeah. know, tasting the salt water of Antarctica and licking out of your chops. That's true. And I felt like that was one of those moments where it did feel like we were trying to escape something. So I got a little bit of one. I wanted there in the end <laughs> uh, and then cutting back here to the to the shots this was uh, just us getting back on the plane to head out of Antarctica uh, very very quickly there's one more video uh, it's not very long um, that kind of sums up our Antarctica trip I hope that everyone who has managed to stay on for this long has enjoyed everything uh, again if we're going to post all this on photo pxl so you'll be able to see uh, everything that we've done here, you'll see other videos at uh, uh, higher resolution and uh, if you're interested. If you have questions or anything like that, you can you know, reach me uh, on Instagram. At Instadur is probably a good way to do it. Um, or via email as well, which can be is on my website. Um, or certainly through PhotoPXL um, as well. So any last words from Antarctica before we wrap it up here with Valparaiso? Well, first off, Michael, you did a, a, a fabulous job here. Oh, um, thanks. <laughs> you know, you, you always like to keep this stuff secret from me, but <laughs> it's always good. It makes um, it more fun for it me. Is, it is more fun. And <laughs> it, it's, it's great to be able to relive the adventure, and I hope share it with you know, the people that have been watching with us and sticking through this tonight. Um, 
you know, I, I've just got this adventure spirit. I, I mean, right now I'm going stir crazy being stuck <laughs> yeah. in the house. But the cool thing is, you know, they say it's safe to get in your car and go like to the woods and That's true. places to take pictures. So yeah. uh, I intend to do that and, you know, maybe capture some of the, the city streets that are all empty and everything. But it is crazy times. Yeah. But, you know, this was only a few months ago that we were doing it. And mm -hmm. it was a different time then. And yeah. uh, this will give us good memories of it. We're going to do it again, and uh, we've got a lot of adventures that we're going to do, so it's going to be fun to, to see where they go, and I hope a lot of our viewers and readers can join us in some of these adventures. Um, yeah. You know, the world's changing, and, uh, you know, it's good to be part of it, good to get out there with our cameras, good to enjoy all this stuff, but uh, it was a great trip, and I think what you're going to see now, this was um, a little side trick, but I'll let Michael talk about it in, yeah. in detail, but... Um, I've been to this city a number of times. It's called Valparaiso. It's a little seaside city in uh, Chile, about an hour or two hours away from uh, Santiago. And we had a day to go there and we found a good guide and his wife. And mm -hmm. we had a marvelous adventure. So I don't know what this is all about, but <laughs> Michael will throw it in there for us and tell us what we're going about to see. Yeah, I'll let the, the video kind of play, play out here and let the area speak for itself. <laughs> We're in uh, Valparaiso, Chile, photographing graffiti art. The amount of it is incredible. The detail in some of this stuff is just amazing. A lot of times when I go out, I want to try to tell a story, although I'm going to be photographing a lot of the art on the corrugated walls and the stucco walls. A lot of these artists actually use doorways as their canvas. I may just do a whole separate section on the doorways of Valparaiso, Chile. I love the cat on the door, Deborah will love that. We have a really excellent guide today, Jamie, and he knows how to get us on the right spot for the photographs, and so far it's hard to walk three feet without turning around and taking another picture. The spray paint business must be really good here. I am from Santiago, but my family came from Italy to Valparaiso. So I am third generation of uh, Italians living here. I'm guiding in Valparaiso for the last seven years. Uh, we work with uh, people who like the history or they want to be involved in the history of Valparaiso. People who want to understand our uh, folklore. It's a very interesting city. It's a port. It used to be the most important port of this part of the South Pacific until the construction of the Panama Canal. Nowadays, it's a very important touristic destination. It's a historical place. We try to find secret places for the people, not just the typical touristic places. The idea is to, to introduce the people to the real Valparaiso more than the touristic Valparaiso. You know, we found paint brushes on the ground. We can go in detail. We got paint peeling off of walls and color. So it's just an incredible photographic opportunity. And although we're still early into the day, we're on the money. The culture is very important here. This is the, cap the South American capital of the, of the street art. So many artists, they are allowed to paint the, the streets. If you talk with the owner of the, of the house, you can make uh, your, your paintings. So that is makes uh, or give freedom to the people to, to express themselves and that enrich the, the landscape of Valparaiso. My name is Sebastián Araya. My work is street artist. I'm a photographer too. This is my work. It's one of, one of my concept of uh, this repression uh, against the people. In this particular picture, you took one of the star soccer players yeah. and then overlaid him in your art against one of the, uh, the police and you pixelated obviously the yeah. face which is pretty yeah. cool yeah and this is a uh, gary medel one of the most valuous uh, player soccer player, player soccer in player, chile football. yeah it's so important for for people That's, in it's very catching very yeah. catching this, this is scene is from uh gary medel kick the best player in the world called Lionel messi in a match from Chile versus Argentina. I applaud you for doing what you're doing and, and you. being strong enough to stand up against that. Yeah. That takes a lot. 
Yeah. Nice work. Thank you. I don't even know how to say how photo rich this city is. It's just been a marvelous day. I've shot a lot of photographs, but it's an interesting city, man. This city's built on a number of hills, a number of cities blend in together here. Nowadays, there's around 40, 45 different hills. Uh, we consider each hill like a neighborhood, yeah? Now we are in the Alegre Hill, but we have other, like the, the hill of the, of the cemetery, one called Cordillera, like Range, other Florida, Lecheros, the butterflies, uh, they're different. Everyone has a specific name, a very nice name. Everybody's just been friendly. We've had great lunch. It's coming from the crust. It's not in the muscle. Okay. Yeah. For example, the flavor of this soup is not coming from the fish, it's coming from this. I love coming to Valparaiso. Uh, this trip's been special because we've had one of the best guides I've ever had going to Valparaiso. All the information will be uh, in the uh, video and at the bottom of the screen. You can check out his uh, uh, social media sites and so forth. It's Jamie. It was just really good. And I want to thank uh, Michael Durr for hanging with me and uh, doing the video uh, for this trip. Uh, we hope to do a number of more videos like this as I travel the world and travel to different locations. This is what I love to do, taking pictures all day long, having a great time, you know, discovering new things, challenging yourself with different compositions. So the bottom line was I couldn't ask for any better trip. We did the cemetery in Punta Arenas. We did the Antarctica trip. Now we've done Valparaiso. <sighs> and we have to go home soon. Anyway, I wanna thank all of you for watching, sticking with us, enjoying all this, I hope, and tune in to Photo PXL. Come back often, because we're trying really hard to enhance your vision. <laughs>
the whole world is fighting for the same thing yeah and that's quite extraordinary and i hope we come out of this with a lot more in our hearts for those people that are around us and around the world and realize that you know we're a fragile species and you know maybe we ought to find better ways to join together i'm an optimist as always but the way it is i want to personally say once again thank you michael thank you art wolf Thanks to the crew at Antarctica 21 and the Magellan Explorer. And also thanks to those folks that shared this trip with us. I can't thank you enough. Uh, we've been, become friends. We're family. <laughs> and uh, it, it, was, it was quite nice. I hope all of you get a chance sometime in your life, no matter what, to try to get to Antarctica and come with us if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> um, but also just try to get out there and, and enjoy the world and enjoy the things that are around you. You know, whether it's walking the streets of Valparaiso or, you know, taking a trip like this or just visiting with uh, a forest or national park or anything else. It's, it's a big world out there. And, and um, I've always had a motto that I'm going to get it all as I can and see as much as I can <laughs> and not wait till I'm too old not to walk again. So, <laughs> anyway, it was a great time. Kumbaya yeah. to all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody for being part of the PhotoPixel family. I can't thank you enough. Uh, it's been quite an adventure to get to where we're going and where we've been. And, uh, you know, we're feeling like we're kicking some butt and having some yeah. good times. So <laughs> I think that's the most fun. Just have a damn good time and get out there and do it. Michael, thanks so much again. Yeah, no problem. Huggy, huggy, <laughs> shake, shake. Anyway, thank you all very much. And we'll see you on Photo PXL in the near future where we're enhancing your vision. You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to edit. See you guys. <laughs>